guys, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Bloom Gubani and this is the Bloom Gubani YouTube channel. Thank you once again for tuning in. Please make sure that you like this video and subscribe to join this ever so blue beautiful family. Without further more to do or say, let us get into today's video. So in today's video, I am going to be sharing with you guys a story time about the time that my brother was lured by a snake to the river crazy i know so without further more to do or say let us get into it so let's take it way 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 back so this story time happened around the time i was probably i was in grade five so i was like nine ten ish at my school we would at my primary school we would have like um art exhibitions <laughs> It would be like art exhibitions showcasing. So like students would produce artwork in every form, drawing, making things and, and so forth and so forth. And like parents would be invited to come and watch, have some tea and just, you know, kind of those kind of vibes. So that would that is what would happen in my school so that time of the year was approaching so because i hadn't participated in the past years well i did but now i wanted to actively like participate like that like invest in my art project not just draw like a, a, a round face like not the lazy art but i wanted to really showcase my talent as a creative so that was just my headspace and then at the time i was living with my mom's side of the family for that weekend i had decided to go visit my father's side of the family uh, so whilst i was there i remembered that from previous visits to the to the river my grandmother would always say that the riverbanks are actually clay like the edge the 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 edge so between the water and just slightly before it goes dry and hard that there there is a bit of clay there. and i thought to myself wonderful 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 that is something that i'm going to be doing for my school art exhibition project so i wanted to do something with Ubumba the clay that was on the riverbanks and i wanted to like make like pottery kind of stuff i don't know that I, what i wanted to do but i probably wanted to do something extravagant because i remember that i wanted to do like oh yes i wanted to do like a body like a human body so i wanted that for my art uh, project and but in behold i was i had access to um clay so easily and that weekend that i had gone home to my father's side of the family i spoke to my grandmother about it i asked her if we should if we could go to the river um the the name of the river i'm not particularly sure with it so if you know Mbali, Mbali Tetini, around that year, it was Umlashankos. So I don't know if it's called Umlashankosi River, but that river. Hi, okay, all of these kids were on board, you know, and obviously they were going to be on board. Because one thing that I remember about me as a child, that if I wanted to do something, I was probably going to do it, you know. So even if they didn't agree with me and my dad didn't say yes, my grandma didn't say yes, I was probably going to go. Like, I was going to sneak out because I was very really adamant in this. Like, I had a vision for my artwork and I'm not going to let anyone stand in between myself and my greatness like that no we go so like the bunch of kids and mind you at that at that time as kids we really started to grow up so there is really like minimalistic things that um that we come together for and also i didn't live there anymore so we were kind of growing apart so one of the few moments that we had an opportunity to kind of be together and just have fun as kids we would take it with both hands and we would go with it so we are walking around it's just so exciting and i'm already imagining myself i'm gonna create a human statue like i already see it in my mind i'm ready i saw let me be walking and then eventually we go to the river and then we walk like we go down the riverbank 
and then I throw that money. So um, I threw a one rand coin um, again because of what I thought and what my grandmother had kind of told me. So I threw it um, in the place where Konezi was so in a deep end that looks like a deep end because you can't see, like, for the rest of the river you can see okay this is like you can see the bottom of it because the water is quite clear as well but there you couldn't see it was dark so obviously it was really deep so i remember just throwing it in there and then it was just like this whole wire was so crazy and we had no business doing that because around the time there was also like quite a spike of kids um drowning in rivers like just little things such as slipping because the the rocks inside the river they are very slippery i think it's the algae which made it look very, very slippery like you know so a lot of things could have happened and we had no business just doing that but we were kids you know we didn't know it and then just everybody started swimming we started going in and out of the river and like those small kind of waterfalls we were kind of diving in them even like the the rocks were slippery we made slides out of the rocks yeah it was just vibes and i was just like okay let's swim for a couple of minutes and then i'm gonna collect the clay and then we're gonna vibe like we're gonna go and everybody was just good with that and then we were like playing minding business and all of that so because i'm like a, a very vigilant person when it comes to like safety and kind of things like that so i was just like okay my spirit started feeling not okay just about certain things there and then like there were too many people slipping at that point so i was just like mm -mm. And, yeah, someone is going to slip they're going to hit their head and something is going to go wrong someone is going to go inside that deep place so that started happening and i was just like mm -mm. Like it's time to go, and the sun was setting at, at that point, and I was just like, mm, I'm not trusting what's happening right now. Like a lot of things are just not in place. I gathered all my clay, I put it in my two plastic bags, and then it was so heavy, by the way. And then we started going. Um, so we walked back home. Everything is fine. It's a bit dark now. It was probably like almost six, going for seven, but I think it was around summer because you know the sun goes. Uh, down a bit later during the day and that was it for that day the following day like when i woke up just minding my own business and 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 then during that time i realized that my cousins and my brother are not in the house so my near cousins and my brother are not there just my other cousin my other female cousin she was there and we were just chit chatting with her and whatever and making breakfast and 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 so they, the three of them were gone. We didn't know where they were. And it was like so early in the morning for them to just disappear like that. But it was just kind of like boys. They always just, after eating, and they wake up very early. Like they probably woke up around 6 a.m. And they would eat breakfast and then they would disappear. Like, the, and, the on, and the only reason why I noticed that they were not in the house because they used to stay in, the, in their room and you know not come out until they're hungry is because every morning after they ate breakfast they would just leave the dishes like that so that's how we would know like actively fight try and find them like clean up after yourself and they would know it to be found so time goes nobody is really interested in like what's happening with um with my cousins and my brother like nobody's really interested in that because it's something that they do that they will go out in the morning and they will come back in the like in the in the late hours of the day and i think it was around 5 p.m my cousin comes back home he's hysterical so he finds my cousin and i the other female cousin and i just sitting in the lounge and he's he barges at it and he's asking where's Graham? like oh go and then we're just like probably somewhere in the house and he's bolting across the house so obviously now you're seeing okay there's something wrong because where's the other cousin where is my brother we don't know what's happening and then he goes to my grandmother who's obviously outside and you're following him and then he's just narrating the entire story of what happened from a to z so he's describing that they were just gallivanting they're walking around and, and meeting up with friends chilling what what they usually do that you know the usuals like it did it was normal and then 
my brother had insisted that they go visit this other friend of theirs so to get to the other friend's house you have to cross that bridge and um they didn't obviously think much of it because they always cross the bridge every time they go to their friend's house like nothing ever happened um the way that my cousin describes it is that they were walking um on the bridge so while when they were in the middle of the bridge my brother kind of stopped turned to the river and then moved towards the railing so when he was moving towards the railing um they kind of also stopped as well because they didn't think much of it and then they were like there for quite a bit and then they noticed that my, my cousin that they noticed that my brother had a black stare to his face and they kind of shook him like hey what's going on and then he snapped back into like reality and they continued on their journey to their friend's house so when they were getting back from their friend's house now it was my brother my two cousins and a friend and the friend's friend so this friend also had other friends that were accompanying him accompanying my cousin and brother so he's walking slightly in front of him my bro my cousin noted that he was walking slightly in front of them so he's walking pretty quickly than the rest of them so they thought maybe he was just like in an off mood or whatever they didn't make like nothing of it and there was that until he was nearing the bridge and he was walking even more quicker so when he was walking more quicker they were trying to like keep up with his pace like what's going on and then they noticed him going short left and going into the riverbank so they were like running after him like what's going on so when how my cousin describes it is that when they got there the, when they got to him he was just standing there rigid like with a blank stare he was just looking at the water and they didn't know what to do with him like they were trying to shake him him, call his name snap him out of it he was not responding whatsoever and they were panicking at that point so which is when my cousin ran to home like he ran home to find my grandmother to tell her that this is what is happening so my grandmother calls my dad and my dad goes and fetches him from the riverbank and then they drive back home with him so when he got home he was still blank like I remember when I was looking at him he was so pale like he was so so pale and like around his lips it was like some like those white things were forming those white bubbles were forming around his lips and like his lips looked chapped he looked so so ashy and like with passionate and he he was just blank like he was blank and we were trying to talk to him we were trying to talk to him he was blank nothing he didn't respond he didn't give any actions like there was just nothing to it like there was nothing to him really and i remember when i was touching him he was so so cold like he was cold as well so we put a blanket on him we put him in the couch in the lounge so that it was easier for us to monitor him just in case he does something maybe go back to the river like we didn't know at that point what to expect so most of us are panicking at this point and you don't know what's going on so i started praying like i started praying for him and then um like like time went on it was like six seven and then we were just we were still sitting by the lounge and you know and we, we had supper and then and then cleaned up so a couple of minutes after we had supper he just woke up like he snapped out of it he woke up and mind you like during that time when he was in in whatever state that he was in his eyes were not completely closed so they were like half open and his really like fairly big eyes so he had like his eyes half open and he was just like looking at one place just a blank stare so when he snapped out of it he was just like he got up removed um he removed the cover went to the kitchen got himself the food ate went to his bedroom and he slept he didn't say anything he didn't like he didn't even look at us like he wasn't looking at us he wasn't doing none of, none of that he just went to the kitchen he ate he went to his bedroom he slept what i was fairly like i was i was really scared i'm not even gonna lie i'm not even gonna front like i was really scared like i didn't know what to expect of him at that point i thought he was gonna choke us in our sleep or he's gonna like escape and go to the riverbank like i didn't know what to expect of him at that point 
so I did like I was barely asleep hey that night um, but I was also like more so worried about him like I was so so worried about him because I don't know what had happened to him It was giving Gijimi vibes, but even though Gijimi was in full like was introduced to us in 2013 But 2010 was still like it's, it's still it's still happening in Yabu And then um, the following day um, We wake up in the morning. We have breakfast to clean around the house. We kind of settled in into like uh, the late morning, the late hours of the morning, and that that is when he comes out of the bedroom. He sits with us, and then after some time, he starts narrating what happened. He starts telling us that there was just something that was drawing him towards the river, like he didn't know what what it was, but it started the the the, the previous day when we had gone to the river to collect that clay, even when we were leaving the river, they, they think they didn't want him to leave. And then when he was passing the river, um, he was like, he was just drawn to it. And when that thing was drawing him to the river, like his mind kind of went black. So if he didn't know what was happening to him, because his mind kind of like went into a dark room. And the, the first time that my cousin shook him, that is when he like snapped back out of it and then the second time when which is one which was when he came back home was born in a and then he thought to oh okay i was just at home this is all just a dream and 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 that was that so um when he said that um because luckily he also wasn't staying there as well like we would just come and visit and go and that particular weekend we had kind of communicated as cousins that we're gonna go to my grandfather's um to my to my grandparents house and then we're gonna stay there for the weekend and then we're gonna go so after that um we kind of went back to our to our homes like our mom's homes and it was just that so nothing really happened to him like till this day he's fine he went back to his old self and um yeah he, like he's he's doing pretty well like he's okay nothing is wrong with him he's good and there was a point in me like i feel guilty i feel really guilty for this because my grand my 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 my, my brother and i kind of have that relationship where we go back and forth so there was a part of me that felt like hmm, he's faking like he's trying to get all the attention but i'm always gonna be the one the shiny the shiny star of this family so hmm. but obviously i saw that it was real and like his life was really in danger and you know i could have lost my, my brother at that time but i'm grateful to god that i didn't and it was quite a traumatic experience for him i can imagine and for us as well just seeing him in that state and not being able to help him it was like kind of very very scary as well and that is it for today's story time everybody please make sure that you like this video and do share a comment down below if you have ever experienced something similar or heard or heard of something similar of sorts and what was your response what did you do in the moment like what happened and what was the aftermath of just that experience do share it in the comments down below but for now do take care subscribe subscribe to join this ever so blue family until our next video do take care goodbye